Hi everyone, the book I'm reviewing today is called My Life in Full, Work, Family and Our Future by Indra Nui. Um, I follow her quite extensively on social media and something about her leadership style always uh, speaks to me. So I was very excited when she wrote her book and I definitely recommend this read for any female. Um, she is she unpacks so many topics and so many conversations and what i really really appreciate about her is she's so honest um so direct um she'll say things as it is and unpack situations and so many times we share so many similar experiences and you don't know is it just me um what just happened how do i unpack that um is that okay is it not um, how did others see it? How do other females feel? And I sometimes realize we can just ignore or not talk about certain aspects. And she's so great at bringing those to the fore and helping us to start a conversation. So I absolutely loved uh, reading this book. She takes us through from childhood, studying, um, immigrating, marriage, working, the tough challenges that all of us can relate to um you know whether you feel guilty about missing something at work or personal children um events uh, dressing um preparing for meetings um salary pays etc i'm going to read a few extracts and then unpack as well as i read through those but definitely must read um book highly recommend it Looking back, I see how my life is full of this kind of duality, competing forces that have pushed and pulled me from one chapter to another. And I see how this is true of everyone. We are all balancing, juggling, compromising, doing our best to find our place, move ahead and manage our relationships and responsibilities. It's not easy in a society that changes very fast, yet sticks to some age-old habits and rules of behavior that feel out of our control. That was important. I was female, an immigrant, and a person of color entering an executive floor where I was different from everyone else. My career had started when the dynamics between women and men at work were not the same as they are now. In 14 years as a consultant and corporate strategist, I have never had a woman boss. I had no female mentors. I wasn't upset when I was excluded from the customs of male power. I was just happy to be included at all. At the same time, I was among a vaunted group of global CEOs regularly invited into rooms with the most influential leaders on the planet. And I came to notice that the painful stories about how people, especially women, struggle to blend their lives and livelihoods were entirely absent in those rooms. The titans of industry, politics and economics talked about advancing the world through finance, technology and flying to Mars. Family, the actual messy, delightful, difficult and treasured core of how most of us live was fringe. This disconnect has profound consequences. And this is just it, right? Even in, in times now, yes, as females, we occupy a lot more spaces. I have had so many more opportunities than what my mom could ever have. Um, but are these still not some of the conversations that we have when these meetings or where these titans of industry, um, politics meet? Are all the relevant voices present? Um, and that's why her book is so powerful. She talks so openly and she shares so vulnerably. Um, and then you sit and think, hey, but that's where we are here. Yes, it may have progressed a bit, but has it progressed that much? Uh, here she reflects about her mum. She handled those issues deftly and with a firm hand. She would have made a great CEO. She didn't get the chance to attend college and she directed that frustration into, into making sure her girls could soar. It wasn't easy for her. I have always felt that she lived her life vicariously through her daughters, wishing for us the freedoms she never had. And her reflecting on family now. 
We thrive individually and collectively when we have deep connections with our parents and children and within larger groups whether we are related or not. I believe that healthy families are the root of healthy societies. I know family is messy with painful issues that can't be reconciled. I had 29 first cousins, 14 from my mother's side whom I had very close to, and 15 from my father's side, many of whom I barely know because of historical rifts I cannot begin to fathom. I think these situations are a microcosm of what the rest of life is like, and they teach us about the difficulties that we must navigate and accept. Here too, she talks about two such important topics that I think all of us in our lives can definitely relate to. Um, I love how she captures the essence of family and family is not only those who we're related to. And so many times we want ourselves or our people to come to work and say, now you're at work. But we bring our whole selves to work, including all the messiness of what happens at home. Quarter after quarter, I felt hostility from a few people in these meetings, and I was increasingly irked that no one else in the room ever backed me up. Once, we held a meeting in London, and when the same scenario played out again, I left at midday and flew back to New York. This was completely out of character for me. Roger noticed, but he said nothing. As time went by, his failure to intervene started to bother me too. The day before that board meeting, on a day when we had one of the quarterly division president's meetings, I went to see Roger in his office. Roger, I'm ready for the board tomorrow, I said. And after that, I'm leaving PepsiCo. I've put up with countless meetings where I've been humiliated. I won't deal with this anymore. I don't want anything from PepsiCo. I'm just going. Even though I'd always been willing to push myself to the edge for my employers, I felt that I had to draw a line when it came to others respecting the sincerity of my work. On that day, I didn't consider where my career would take me next. I just wanted to get out of what I felt was an unacceptable situation. This again highlights how so many times, and especially as females, we may talk about how we feel or how we're treated or how we're seen or how we're heard. Um, and in a boardroom, uh, filled with mostly men, do they really understand what we're trying to get through? Um, you can voice, is it really hurt? Um, and it was quite refreshing for me to see how she dealt with it um, and how she continued to voice how she feels. I think it's so important for all of us to find that voice and your feeling is something that it's about you and it's how you feel no one can take that away from you and if we're not heard in places it's about making the decisions where we feel empowered thereafter i did not stop my own work responsibilities were huge but i felt compelled to make sure everyone else's work was up to par too i coached and mentored and i reviewed and rewrote presentations for dozens of colleagues of all the times I overdid it, one day still stabs at me. Mary Waterman, our lovely next door neighbor, died of breast cancer. But I skipped Mary's funeral because I stayed back at work rewriting slides related to the restaurant spin-off for the board, something that was really the responsibility of two others on our team. These men had just dropped the assignment on me saying, you do it so well and Roger trusts you. I should have just said no. I have never forgiven myself for prioritizing my work that day over my dear friend Mary. How many experiences I'm sure you can share where you've struggled to say no as well. We, we've had to pick up the work for the men in our teams. Um, and this was really powerful for me because those regrets stab at you constantly. This happened years and early on in Indra's career and till today she reflects on this with painful memory. 
so it's about us understanding when to say no and when it's appropriate and she shares so many different situations that talk to this um, quite inspiring the last extract that I'm going to read now I felt like I had landed whatever that meant I also got a substantial raise. When Steve became my boss and I became president, he noticed that my compensation hadn't been adjusted to reflect all of my responsibilities beyond CFO. Roger hadn't bothered with this. HR never brought it up and neither did I. I loved my job and felt it was a privilege to be sitting in that office. I felt I owed PepsiCo my hard work. Money was not my driver, and my salary was impressive, I thought, given where I'd started at BCG. I didn't compare myself with the men around me, some of whom I later learned had been getting generous special stock option grants for years. In my first six years at the company, I received nothing like that. Now, the new CEO gave me a meaningful base salary increase and asked the board to award me a special stock grant. I still wonder why, over many years, I found it typical for the HR department to skate over the issue of women not being rewarded quite the same as men. Why did HR people tolerate it? It didn't seem to matter if the HR head was male or female. They were all very energetic about their worthy diversity programs, yet defensive if I asked why a promising young woman executive wasn't getting the same salary as a similarly ranked guy. We know that, on the whole, women's median salary in the US is about 80% that of men. In my world, pay disparity was expressed in smaller increments. A woman would get 95% of the base pay of a man doing the same work. If I asked why she was getting 5% less, I'd be told, it's such a small difference, don't worry about it. Sometimes I would fight back a little with, then why don't we pay her 105% of what he is getting? It was always an uphill battle when, in reality, HR should have been flagging these issues and systematically addressing them. In any case, I found the very people managing salary budgets stuck on the idea that the men should get a little more. I wonder if it is because HR departments intrinsically still see men as more ideal. I have talked to friends in many industries and this pattern persists no matter how outraged we claim to be about women being paid less. This is another one. Um, studies have been done and we can see data uh, and a lot of it for companies in the US, um, the UK, I've seen some as well. But what about in Africa? What about in an African context? Um, we're still talking about women being represented in boards, in executive um, leadership, in management positions. Are we even ready to have the conversation about equal pay for equal work? Um, are we ready to look at pay parity within our companies? Um, it really touches so many different things. I absolutely loved reading this book it's in my top 10 all-time reads and i definitely suggest uh, you grab a copy thank you